Thursday the 9th of April, dollar index, not much to report today. Yesterday was fairly stable <clears throat> after um, some worries at the beginning of the week as we wait for this Chinese delegation to visit Washington and figure out a trade deal or not figure out a trade deal. So uh, dollar index is clearly in a bull trend. We are still maintaining the bull trend. So as you close up, you can see we've got a trend line going back to end of January and we're holding it. Uh, every time we go down to the trend line, it looks like buyers step in, judging by these lower candle wicks. So I have to stick with the bears uh, for that reason. Uh, sorry, stick with the bulls for that reason. This is what the short term chart looks like. The hourly chart, we're trading between the 500 and the 200 hour moving average, as you can see, as they sort of gravitate towards each other. Um, we'll have to get up through 97.65 to test a very minor trend line at 97.90. Uh, and then if we get up through 97.95, that's going to look more positive. Uh, downside, we've got 97.45 on the dollar index. Lower trend line, slightly more significant at 97.35. Below there would certainly be more negative, though. And it would probably indicate a breakdown of this trend line here below 97.35. Yes, it definitely would. So below 97.35 is going to be more negative for the index. Aussie has entered a more of a sideways uh, pattern in the last day or so. Clearly we've got resistance at 70, 20, 70, 30. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that yesterday and that worked. So if you did sell it there, that looked quite nice as we dipped down to 69.83, 69.60 is obviously the support level to watch. So really the only two trading levels for me are 69.60, 70 20 70 30 a break above there takes us back up to the week high at 70 48 i really don't see this happening but that's where we would target uh, anywhere from sort of 70 50 up to 70 60. um the one in 100 hour average might make a slight difference at 70 00 but i don't really think that's a trading level central bank of new zealand cut rates yesterday down to one and a half percent i think that's the lowest rate for uh well a long time or maybe it's a record low actually and I think that was the first rate cut for three years or something. Anyway, um, you can see we remain in a bear trend. Now, we spiked down and then recovered when the market realized that they probably won't cut rates again. Uh, but we're still in a negative trend. 65, 80, 65, 90 uh, is your first level. You can see that from the previous low and uh, the little fib, 23.6% fib I've got in there. So I think the, the pressure remains to the downside. I certainly wouldn't be buying this. Dollar yen is lower. We are getting oversold, but I wouldn't uh, pay too much attention to that because there's no big support level where I would suggest buying. Uh, the hourly chart shows us hitting uh, FIB extension, uh, that, the 161.8 FIB extension. We've just held a fraction above 109.87. Maybe we'll go sideways because we're oversold. Uh, below 109.80, well, we've got the previous low down here at 109.70. So 109.80. 109.70 is obviously the level to watch. Break below the March low um, sets off the ne next leg lower, really. 109.55 would be the first target. Euro versus then the yen also looks pretty negative. So further yen strength, we've broken the 500-day moving average at uh, 500-week moving average at 123.80, and we're down at 123.09. We've broken these little lows down here at 123.40, 123.38. So I think pressure remains to the downside. Euro barely moving this week, as you can see on the weekly chart. Looks like we're stuck in a 63 pip range. Not an awful lot you can do with that when you only move 63 pips in three days, as you can see on the daily chart sideways. So really, I've got no clue with this. Dollar versus Canadian also very much sideways, as I've said before. Up for a day or two, down for a day or two. This week we're up and then we're back to where we where we opened and then we're down and we're back to close to where we opened and yesterday we were down and closed very near to where we opened. So there's a total lack of uh, conviction from bulls or bears, a lot of indecision and no one's prepared to commit themselves and push this market in any direction at the moment. The pound's also pretty messy. We've now given up all those strong gains and come back to the 100 day moving average. I'm really not sure what to do with this now. As usual, it's just political and um, I'm no Brexit expert. Gold I messed up yesterday. I had that resistance at 87.88 and I had a stop at 91 or above. Now we spiked up to 91 and this trade messed me up too. We spiked up to the stop. Really, I should have been trying a short up here. Uh, I, can't, I messed the levels up. Um, by the time 
you know well you can see that this level this resistance has been declining so anyway um well done if you held on to the short because obviously we did go lower and i do stick with the negative bias i do think gold will continue lower um if we get anywhere near 87 88 you know uh, you could sell a bit there and you could sell a bit again at 90 91 stop above 94 that kind of thing because i do think this will go lower but we, we may not get a chance now judging by this pretty negative candle where we pushed up and then closed lower it looks like the pressure will be to the downside in gold silver we've been selling in the low to mid 1490s all week and that has worked really really well we haven't been higher than 97 i don't think no so if you've been selling every day at the suggested levels uh, there's been a profit on that trade pretty well certainly uh, certainly every day this week and um, again and so silver looks negative i think silver and gold will both go lower i talked about this strong support level in crude yesterday and it held perfectly again yes uh, yesterday so uh, 6107 holding just above 6090 6070 uh, possibly a recovery uh, from fairly oversold um, conditions not dramatically but we are still in a bull trend so if we hold that we can push higher uh, I would wait for a bounce. Just gonna have a look at the short-term charts. So we're gonna have to get up through 62.50 according to the hourly chart to get up to 63.00, maybe 63.70. And uh, what am I seeing on here? Yeah, we've got this previous peak at 62.95. So I don't know. We, I'm not really sure where we could get to, but I think we could go higher. We, we certainly could get to the mid $63 area. It's a possibility. I would suggest we're going to need a weekly close tomorrow night below 6070 for this to head lower next week and target, uh, target the $59 area really. I've had a negative outlook on the e mini s p ever since the first of the month and we have drifted lower yesterday more of an inside day i i wouldn't take that as too positive i think there is still some room to the downside obviously it's all about what happens with china and the us everyone's focused on that 55 day moving average is, is clearly offering some support and it comes in today at 2863 so we'll need to hold below 2863 to see further moves to the downside uh, I'm focused on this little downside, uh, sorry, bearish channel that we're building here. And I think that is the focus. Um, we would need to get up through 29.15 for me to change my opinion on that. So that's your big resistance level of the day. Well, yeah, we've got a little trend line here. At, by the time we get there and the 100 hour moving averages gets there too, we're probably going to be around 29.00, 29.05. Uh, and then up through there, we've got more important trend line resistance around 29, yeah, 29, 14, 29, 16. So the 200 hour moving average will be heading towards there too. So I guess above 29, 20 was where I would stop out of any shorts and jump into a long position. Dow Jones hourly also showing a very clear uh, bias to the downside with the 100 hour moving average crossing below the 200 uh, here. And now the 500 uh, at the beginning of this week, uh, we've got the 200 crossing below the 500 as well. So moving average wise, we've certainly got some sell signals uh, with the price holding well below the moving averages. And uh, you can see from my uh, trend lines here indicating the bearish short term trend. So I'm going to stick with that trend. Uh, we're going to have to get up through 26 to 50 for me to change my mind on that. That's your key resistance level for the day. So you want to probably try a short there and then a reverse above it. Let's have a look at the daily chart. If I can get something that actually makes some sense on this daily chart. There we go. Um, some support around 25.920. We seem to be spiking below that and then recovering above it. So the market's going to have to actually close below 25.915 uh, for us to make further moves to the downside. We've got yesterday's low at 25.800 and then 25. 750 as sort of downside levels to watch for well watch for break below them if we want further losses inside day for the nasdaq 2 uh, again wouldn't get too bullish about that we've obviously got support from the lower bollinger band and a little 23.6 percent fib at 75 75 that is holding so clearly that's the level to beat on the downside if we want further losses and i, I do favor further losses we can then target the 55 day moving average at around 75.05.00. And then we have some support, some decent FIB support at uh, 70, 
Oh, hang on, where are we now? What's this one? Uh, get this right. 7473.90. DAX, you know from my reports that I had important an important area around 12,290, 12,270, break below 12,230 was seen as negative. So we, we've managed to bounce back up to 12,230. I think that was pretty much yesterday's high, in fact. So we're back testing um, important resistance levels. More important, I would suggest, is, is that 12,270, 12,290 area. We've got a uh, 500 day moving average in the trend line there. If we were to get that, that high, I don't think we will actually. Again, DAX, I fancy moves to the downside. So if we hold below 12 to 30, uh, look for a retest of recent lows, really. Um, 12, 12, 70, 12, 40. I'm regularly asked by my subscribers and uh, my social media followers, which is the best charting platform to use or which one do I use in my videos, uh, my daily uh, technical analysis, analysis and trade ideas videos. So. Um, I just want to let you know that Metastock is something I've used for as many years as I can remember now. I've tried so many different charting platforms over the, over the 15 years or so that I've been doing technical analysis um, and Metastock is by far the best. The, the quality of the data, you've got to have a platform where you draw trend lines on different um, time periods, for example, and they all line up. So I've, I've had some platforms where you put a, a trend line on a weekly chart, you get a completely different uh, values than you do on a daily chart for example you know you, you can't have that you've, you've got to have something that's absolutely top-notch uh, so that you can trust uh, the the data so without doubt this is the number one um, if you're interested in a free trial you can just go to metastock.com forward slash day trade ideas that will get you a free trial if you have decided you want to sign up and give it a go for three months uh, you can get three months for the price of one, which is obviously a phenomenal deal. So just go to metastock.com forward slash offer forward slash trial forward slash three for one.